Let us attempt to discover now, together, who or what this awareness you are. This awareness that is aware of all of the roles, names, labels, memories and relationships that you have said you are, yet are somehow beyond the entanglement in them aware of. To do this, let us make a little space inside of ourselves. If we come at this with too much self and not enough intelligence, too much knowledge and not enough intuition and heart, we will pollute our clarity of seeing. So to make some space, I will invite you metaphorically into a quiet forest far from the bustle of life. As we enter, there is a beautiful tree and I will ask you to hang everything that you do not need for this journey upon that tree. We will do this so that we can see clearly and inquire as to what this awareness is that is aware of the self. So let us start with our name. We don't need it now. Let's hang that on the tree. We'll take our age next and we'll hang that on the tree. We don't need it for now. You can grab them on the way out, but you're just putting them there for a moment whilst we enter this forest. Nationality. Let us hang that on the tree. We don't need it. You have had that from birth, but let's just hang it on the tree for a time. Already, we should be recognizing that we can become lighter by doing this. Next, hang up relationships. Hang relationships on the tree. Brother, father, husband, son, sister, wife, grandmother, etc. Whatever you may be in this world as a relationship identity, hang it on the tree. I know these are extremely hard to hang up, but it's only for a brief time. Let us put them on this tree. Let us put them on this tree together. Next up, we take our academic labels, our career path, etc. Hang those on the tree. We don't need them for now. If you are aware of them, they are not who you are. Put them on the tree. Next, let us place our spiritual practices and our spiritual labels on the tree. Those structures are also not needed here, only for a time. Next, I will take our religious identity and our religious labels and just for a moment, hang that on the tree. We are not abandoning it. If anything, we are coming back to it with more clarity, with more love. We wish to draw closer to God with this exercise, not further away. Next, take your scientific labels, of which we have many. Hang them on the tree, human, man, woman, etc. We don't need those for now. Next, I will take your memory and my memory and we hang them on the tree. All of these previous things we have hung on the tree in some way rely on memory. But for now, let us just switch off memory and hang it on the tree. We don't need it as we go into this forest. We need only be present. We have together hung much of who we are in this world on the tree. And there is likely more to go with it. However, before we proceed into this forest to find out who this awareness is, a stranger walks by and sees what we are doing. They come to you and they ask you a question. They look at the tree and all that is hanging there and they say, who is the one hanging these things on the tree? Now initially you may feel compelled to say, well, it's me, John. But right now you know it's not, as you have hung your name on the tree. Well, it's me, a human, you might say. But you just put those scientific labels on the tree also. And if you put them on the tree, they really can't be you, can they? Or they would not have been able to put them there. It's me, the son of... Oh no, that's a relationship. And that's hanging on the tree also. Then it was me, a Christian. Ah, no, 
This also is on the tree. Our religious identities are hanging there. If that was hung on the tree, then the one hanging it can't be it. Eventually, if you dig deep down into this, you will see that you are left with but a few answers. Who is hanging all of those things on the tree? Answer one, I don't know. Okay, good. Hold on to that thought. Answer two, me. But who is me? I don't know as all the terms I would use to describe me are on the tree. So I'm back to I don't know again. Remember that. Answer three. Who is the one hanging all of those things on the tree? I am. I am. I am. I am. But who is I am then? You don't know. I am is actually a mask for exactly that. I don't know. And this begins the doorway of the truth that most humans are struggling to open. I am hanging all of those things on the tree. This sentence does not lack significance, not if you look at it. You are brought back to the bare bones of yourself here. You have returned to the point of immense innocence like a child even. And this might be a good thing for Jesus himself said that unless you become as children, you may not enter the kingdom. You have no definitions, no labels or pretense of what you are, where you are and why you are. You have stopped pretending you understand this mystery as you were taught to. Your words and labels have stopped. The structure of self you have used your whole life has stopped. And yet you are inexplicably still here, doing, seeing and hanging things on a tree. Without the self you have hung up, you are left with this state of not knowing. You can say I am or I don't know. They both point to the same truth. Despite not knowing, you are nevertheless still here and still doing, seeing and aware. It is a state if moved into correctly and the self does not, in its discomfort, jump in and try to analyze and control it again, of humility, of innocence, and you might even say virgin consciousness. For what is humbler than a man or a woman with no self to interfere in life's unfoldment. Pure life energy, looking through a body once owned by a name, a nationality and dreams, owned by a mind and its thoughts. Without self, how can one feel more than another? You recognize the I am is actually what other people are also, only they have gotten lost and they do not see it and believe the self is who they are. And the self, to those people, is actually the one hanging things on a tree. With no self, you are no longer analyzing life, yet you are still in it, part of it, it in itself. You have just become free of anything between your interaction with the world and the cosmic intelligence that is growing your hair as you read this. In the Bible it states, God guides the humble. Psalm 25, 9. Is this empty state where the saints found the presence of the living force that led them to great deeds of compassion and that we have pointed at with the term God? Through investigating awareness, we have reached the space of the I am, if all has worked as planned, and it is a sense of childlike humility and not knowing, and yet a pure isness remains. Who is hanging those things on the tree? All your attempts at building a self to make sense of this life are hung on the tree, yet someone is still here, still aware they are on the tree and aware that they hung it on the tree. You have stripped away religious imagery and spiritual and scientific definitions. And you have continued to be nevertheless, and you have continued to hang these attributes of self on the tree. Beyond there, 
The only way you could possibly verbalize who was hanging these things on the tree is by seeing, in what is somewhat astonishing innocence as you look at all these labels and rolls hanging there, as I am. I don't know. In the Bible, God gave his name only once when asked, I am that I am. Jesus was asked about his authority and he responded with, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Now I am not saying that I am God. I do not know how my liver works as it does or what my body does when I sleep. Yet I am saying that this state of deduction of self and its labels, this backward engineering to the space of I am, or I don't know, but I am still here, is a space in consciousness where a profound love has overtaken many a man and a deeply profound and positive transformation has occurred with it. We have to define this, of course, as I remind you words do not equate to reality. Your mind might be throwing out images and opinions of God that are not the images that my mind holds. It may be throwing up judgments, hurts, rebellious memories and ideas that God is terrible and a dated conservative concept. Images of a man in the sky who wants your money or else. Images that God has created, immense suffering in the world with wars and inquisitions and the like. And you'd be right. The image of God in man's mind has done all those things, no doubt about it. Whereas others who have known God's presence speak of great love. Compassion, intelligence and wisdom guiding their lives, just as Jesus spoke of and lived for in his teachings. Somehow one set of humans are monsters in the name of God, lacking love and compassion, while the others are saints, filled with empathy, empathy and selfless acts of love. Suppose you have truly separated from self in some way here. In that case, I want to pose this to you. Maybe, just maybe, it is because one set of these humans knew only of God in the realm of self. Self and all its words, labels and images and the other set, the saints among us, they knew God without the self. They knew God through the space of the I am. This space lacks analysis and self, a place that can only be defined loosely with the word surrender, perhaps. Meister Eckhart wrote, nothing in all creation is so like God as stillness. And I would add, Nothing is as still as a human who somehow in life, his soul has hit the sleep button on the self, on the mind, which is to hit the sleep button on thought, analysis and memory just for a time. Now, where do awareness and God meet then? After all, we are here to ask who or what this awareness is, not who or what God is. After chapter one, I hope there is a clear realization that we are aware of the self, so the self is not us, for we are aware of it. We have then inquired here into awareness, reaching for a space of freedom to inquire, we have deduced ourselves into the position where our only response for who is the one looking out of the body is I am, or I don't know. Yet here I am, still here looking, doing, hearing, Self is not analysing, doing, being, labelling or telling stories of who we are, we just are. This I am state, I will call it, is it seems one of admitting you don't know. Your analytical mind will try to know, but all in vain, as it, if it digs deep enough, will reach the truth of I am. I don't know, yet I am still here, has just been touched upon. Science has added endless labels to try and deduce what you are and where you are. Spirituality, religion and philosophy have done exactly the same. Yet they have all built it on the reality that we don't know, or they would never have started trying to explain it in the first place. 
We have reached the space where awareness and then the I amness doer that is awareness stripped back, the virgin consciousness that is doing you, is unknown to us and it seems unknowable. Recognizing the tremendous unknown you are, in and of and in some peculiar way, our looking out at this text just now is acknowledgement of an immense unity. There was no you, no self beyond thought. That was all a game of the mind, a needed one, but one that is a lethal if it drowns out the I am and the I amness within you. For when it does, it drowns out the unity, and in the unity, immense love and compassion for one another is born. Not because you should, or because God told you to love one another, but because you simply and inescapably do. So awareness is the great unknown, and when we inquire into awareness, we reach the I am, or I don't know yet, I am still here doing. This sounds like a dead end, but it's not. It's the beginning of the love, peace and truth you have likely heard taught by Jesus and others. Awareness is the doorway to union with all things. The union with the I am that was here from the beginning. The I amness that you have been forced to see is potentially looking out from you. Without the mind structures to define and ground it, if we can really find the I am, we can find humility. And if we can find humility, we can find unity. And if we can find unity, we will know love, great love. Somehow, awareness leads us to this blank canvas within us, our virgin consciousness. And now that we have found that, might we be able to give birth to the qualities in our actions and intelligence that Jesus Christ represented and Christianity has often failed to bring. I don't know how it works with me reading it. It feels a little less engaging. But try that exercise. Hang all the roles and labels that you have said you are on a tree. And then ask who on earth hung them there all the depictions and adjectives I said I was are there before me, who was that one hanging things on the tree? And there the mystery of God is revealed through the core nature of what you are, for in the core of you is your soul, and the soul is closer to God than any part of you. God bless guys, if you're interested in the book, you can grab a copy on Amazon. Be well.